Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK, and I asked you which fight scene you'd like me to look at from a medical point of view, talking about some of the injuries and some of the initial medical management in our rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis patent pending <laughs> and a few of you said this scene here so the alley scene from Watchmen I'm a huge fan of Alan Moore as you can tell up here there's some uh, V for Vendetta masks I haven't seen Watchmen for a good amount of time so I don't particularly remember this scene but I know it's extremely violent and the injuries are very graphic so a bit of a trigger warning I probably should have done that with some of my previous videos but certainly this one is the most graphic we've ever done. One of the principles of trauma in medicine is we assume the worst possible injury and rule that out which is what we're going to do in this case and we're going to assume <laughs> these are superheroes so the injuries are going to be pretty severe. Three, two, one. Fire. Open fracture dislocation of the radius and ulna with a vascular injury. This probably borders on a traumatic partial amputation actually. You need to pop that bone back in and do urgent hemorrhage control including splinting of the limb, direct pressure to that blood and possibly even a tourniquet. <laughs> Fall from standing, probably no injury, but you couldn't rule out a cervical spine fracture. He also has this distracting injury in the right upper limb, so he might not be able to feel the pain from his neck. At the scene, you definitely want to immobilize him with a collar, blocks, and on a spinal board. Right, a kick to the head like this is extremely dangerous. 100% some kind of hematoma, but you'd want to rule out a fracture to the facial bone, sinuses, and the base of the skull. In this instance, probably an anterior cranial fossa fracture, which would cause symptoms of leaking of cerebrospinous fluid through the nose and a late sign of bleeding behind the eyes that we call panda eyes. The real worry would be damage to the underlying structures, so the brain and blood vessels. Blood trauma to the area we call the right iliac fossa. It doesn't see much, but he does go flying. A pelvic fracture takes a lot of force, something like a car accident. So because these are superheroes, I'm going to assume that kind of power is possible. Therefore, I'd be very concerned about a fracture and you'd want to apply a pelvic binder to maintain stability and reduce bleeding and careful monitoring of circulation and then an emergency pelvic x-ray and urgent fast scan so an ultrasound scan to look for blood the abdominal cavity or the pelvic cavity either from pelvic fracture or injury to one of the intra-abdominal organs quite the facial beating here we'd be looking at facial fracture base of skull fracture again and traumatic brain injury coupled with a traumatic tooth extraction if knocked unconscious the bleeding from this injury could cause an airway concern as the blood could pool in the throat and stop the patient breathing also some of these teeth here could go into the back of the throat and you'd lose your kind of natural reflexes to clear the throat if you're knocked unconscious. If we're really struggling to clear that upper airway of blood or any tissue or anything like that, our only option may be an emergency surgical airway where we'd put a tube into the cricothyroid membrane here. Hopefully we can stabilize this patient's airway, rule out any head injury, but then they need urgent review by a Maxvac surgeon or an otorhinolaryngologist. Oh, awesome. Oh, a real eye-watering one, that one. An anterior knee dislocation from blunt trauma to the distal femur. These often reduce on their own before coming into hospital, meaning they go back into place. Kind of what I think happens here. In these injuries, you need to be vigilant for injury to the popliteal blood vessels and common perineal nerve, the things that run down the back of the knee. <laughs> Mandibular fracture, you know I hate these, and possible traumatic brain injury. Although you'd have to be unlucky, this type of impact could lead you with a rib fracture and damage to the lung. So something like a pneumothorax, so air in between the linings of the lung, or a hemothorax, so blood in between those linings as well. Both of which would require a chest drain, so a tube inserted into the chest to either drain the air or drain the blood. That is the testicular trauma. It is rare, it's not life-threatening, but there is such a thing as testicular rupture. Less said about that, the better. Okay, this dude's neck. 
Did you know? Rotation with extension force on the cervical spine. Hugely worrying mechanism. And it is actually massively reassuring that he's able to stand after receiving this trauma because a spinal cord injury at this level would lead to quadriplegia, so paralysis in the upper limbs and lower limbs. And if the damage is super high up in the spine, so above the spinal level, C3, 4 and 5, the nerves that come from here keep your diaphragm alive. So the diaphragm is your main muscle of breathing. So if you get damage to the spinal cord there, you might be unable to breathe for yourself, which obviously you'd die very quickly. So make sure he's got a collar on his neck, blocks on his head and on a spinal board. Because if he's got an unstable fracture there, at any point, if that's not moved correctly, that could sever the spinal cord and then cause this damage to the spinal cord. And what about Anterior shoulder dislocation. Every time we seem to have one of these, not life-threatening on its own. So this dude has definitely got off lightly, although this is still super painful. So all he needs is analgesia and a reduction. But you'd also need to rule out damage to the axillary artery and axillary nerve. And the only real long-term problem with this is instability or recurrent dislocations due to damage to the ligaments. <laughs> Blunt trauma to the parietal region of skull, you'd worry about a depressed skull fracture, brain contusion, so bruising in the brain, and an intracranial bleed too, all of which would need emergency neurosurgical input. Our shoulder dislocation guy, he's got off lightly again, he has another little scrap here, not much in it really, I think he just needs his mum to rub it better. I'm not sure exactly what this was here, maybe a posterior shoulder dislocation or maybe just severe damage to the rotator cuff, so the group of muscles that stabilise the shoulder. Either way, that's the least of his worries now because he's had a low MG penetrating injury to the lateral neck with around about a 20 centimeter blade. It goes without saying, very high chance of life-threatening injury here. So if we get ruptured to the trachea, so the windpipe or the carotid artery, the jugular vein, or any kind of bleeding or swelling that goes into the windpipe, it's gonna be fatal within seconds to minutes. Any disruption to that upper airway there, we're gonna have a low threshold for another surgical airway, so a cricothyroidotomy. Any problems with the blood vessels, we're gonna to have to do direct pressure, IV access, blood transfusion, and urgent surgical repair. If that wasn't enough, this guy gets three gunshot wounds to the posterior thorax. Multiple potential different injuries here, depending on the tract and the fragments of the bullets, but you'd be looking at possible rib fractures, hemothorax, pneumothorax, maybe even a tension pneumothorax, that's one not to miss. Damage to the aorta, so the main blood vessel that comes off the heart, the heart itself, the esophagus, the diaphragm, all of which can be life-threatening and very quickly. Even if this dude was straight into the emergency department, his chance of survival, you know, combined with this neck injury, are very slim. And finally, another head injury, so a facial bone fracture or base of skull fracture and possible traumatic brain injury. And this hyperextension of the neck would worry about a cervical spine fracture too. In summary, our best guess would be one stable, two in serious condition, six in critical condition, and one dead at the scene. Imagine being the first one on the scene here, it'd be absolutely horrendous. This situation here would easily fulfill the criteria of a mass casualty incident. This is where the medical resources are overwhelmed by the number and severity of casualties involved. Worth noting as well that although many of these injuries can be life-threatening on their own, anyone who's unconscious, which most of these people appear to be, is also at risk of death from what is called in layman's terms, swallowing your tongue. You don't actually swallow your tongue, it's just you're in such a deep sleep that you lose the muscle tone in your throat and your protective reflexes to protect your throat and you're basically just unable to breathe. Therefore, establishing an airway is a key priority when we first assess someone, as it could kill you in seconds if not cleared. The simplest way to do this is the head tilt chin lift to open up that airway, or if we're worried about the C-spine, we'd do a jaw thrust on the patient. So there you have it, my thoughts on this brilliant, but pretty brutal scene. For the most part, I thought it was super realistic, the way 
some of the injuries happened and the disability that then the actors had from it. And also at the end here, where lots of people are kind of semi-conscious, that's exactly what you'd picture when people are injured like this. So thank you for suggesting I take a look at this. I know I've had lots of other suggestions of fight scenes and I'd love to hear more about them because this one was right up my street and I'd like to find some more that you enjoy. So I'll just leave it there. I hope you're all well, wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life. Thank you for all the support on the channel. Oh, another thing, if you wanted to kind of support the channel a little bit more, I've just launched some face coverings here. They come in a variety of different colors, a pink and a yellow one as well. I worked so hard to get a really cool design for you with all the cells and the immune system. So they're pretty darn unique. And yeah, I think they look pretty cool. Face mask, obviously super important at the moment and mandatory in many settings. So if you need some and you wanna help support my channel as well, that would be fantastic. I'll leave a link down below. So it just leaves me to say, I hope you're all well. Thank you for all the support on the channel, all the likes, all the views, all the comments. You continue to blow me away and I'll be back soon. Until then, bye.